Hello again and welcome to SFF 180 Horror. In today's episode, an intrepid team of ghost hunters explore a Virginia mansion for their cable show. And naturally, or supernaturally as the case may be, end up way over their heads. In episode 13. Hello again everyone, Thomas here, your host as always. Thank you all for joining me once again. Found footage movies have been both beloved and derided by horror fans ever since the Blair Witch Project broke out from the Sundance Festival in the late 90s. But it's not the only stylistic approach movies have taken to create a real-life, you-are-there vibe for the audience. Mockumentaries have been around for ages. Screen life films replicate post-COVID online anxieties, while YouTube and other online platforms have brought us so-called alternate reality games and unfiction, fictional stories that suspend disbelief by presenting themselves as cinema verite realism. But can this approach work for prose fiction? Well, duh, of course it can. <laughs> in fact, the whole shtick originated in prose fiction, with epistolary novels going all the way back to Bram Stoker and beyond, giving readers the sense they're living the events of the story in real time with the characters. Later stories like Robert Bloch's Notebook Found in a Deserted House and Simon Kurt Unsworth's terrifying Panine Tower Restaurant are among many chilling tales keeping the tradition alive. And now, we have Craig DeLuey's episode 13, about a hapless group of ghost hunters who get way more than they bargained for. To evoke authenticity, DeLuey unspools his narrative as a series of journal entries, emails, text messages, and raw camera footage transcripts. Now, when it works, it works well, and when it doesn't, it reveals many of the limitations inherent in trying too hard to adapt found footage technique to prose form. This shows up most noticeably in the journal entries, some of which throw the story's pacing off badly. Other times we get journal entries where it seems implausible that a character would have taken the time right at that very moment to write one. I mean... If I'm being menaced by some nightmarish horror from beyond the abyss, you know, I I'm not going to stop and say, uh, hey, can you give me a minute? I just need to journal this. Our team of investigators work for a cable show called Fade to Black. This is all happening in 2016, doing its best to compete in an oversaturated paranormal market. The show's hook is that husband and wife team Matt and Claire Kirkland engage in a friendly rivalry, with Claire playing Scully to Matt's Mulder. But Claire is privately frustrated with the show and is ready to move on. She's a dedicated scientist who wants to pursue a proper scientific career, which, being the token debunker on a ghost show, is emphatically not. The network also thinks that, while the show has so far worked well in offering both true believer and skeptical viewpoints, ratings are kind of losing steam, and so they need to take everything up a notch to wrap up season one if they hope to have a season two. Hope comes in the form of the Foundation House, a hundred-year-old mansion in Virginia that was home in the early 1970s to an outfit calling themselves the Paranormal Research Foundation. That's the kind of outfit that forms when intellectuals do too many psychedelics. The PRF was comprised of members of the Human Potential Movement, which was a real thing born out of the 60s counterculture. But in the novel, the PRF scientists believed that all people possess innate paranormal powers, which could lead to a true utopia if only these powers could be tapped. In their repurposed mansion, they conducted numerous experiments of an ethically dubious nature on human subjects until the entire team inexplicably disappeared. I'm investigating this. Sounds like a situation where nothing could possibly go wrong. DeLuey builds his story with great care and makes some honestly surprising choices that bypass cliches so that we come to understand what's in this house is happening on a cosmic level, not only far beyond ghosts, but beyond the capacity of our intrepid investigators to process. That's all I'll say about that. As for the other three members of the team, DeLuey makes choices I both liked and disliked. Kevin is the show's tech manager. 
an ex-cop, who is even more of a fanatical true believer than Matt due to his fear that a literal demon has been pursuing him ever since the night he and his partner answered a really bad call in Philadelphia. It's a bit too obvious early on that this guy is going to be a loose cannon and a troublemaker. Jake is the camera op who enjoys the show but sees it as a job, first and foremost, until events in Foundation House start to make him think that maybe there is something to all this ghost hunting business. Now, Jake is sympathetic, but Jessica Valenza, whose real name is Rashida Brewer, is the one truly likable member of the team. A trained actress who is all too aware, as a young black woman, that she is the show's diversity hire, she remains invested due to her fear fate to black may be the only big break she may ever get, and she understandably wants career success to help her raise her son. Through texts with her word sister, she earns reader sympathy in a way the more shallowly drawn Matt and Claire don't. We can chuckle at her jokes about hunting ghosts with crazy white people while also admiring that when things start getting real, she's the smartest one of the bunch, making a beeline right for the exit. Episode 13 is smartly conceived, even if its execution can feel uneven and occasionally contrived to fit DeLuey's docu-realist approach to the material. It's overlong, and its attempts at big scares don't always deliver like they should, but the final passages are harrowing, and Louis very effectively makes the case that seekers might not like what they find, or they might like it more than they ever believed possible. And it's an open question, which of those situations is worse? And there you have it. That's all I've got time for this episode of SFF 180. Remember the most important thing, these are reviews. You are not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button. Share the video far and wide with all of your SFF and horror reading friends, and above all, please subscribe. If you have not yet done so, that is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Winx Army occasionally get little perks like early access to some of my videos, but mostly the purpose of the Patreon is to help me pay Matt Olson my incredibly gifted and talented channel artist who does all of my beautiful thumbnails and things for me. So that additional support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much. And I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And so until I see all of you next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and spooky reading.